Okay, so I'm story timing today, you guys. At least a little one, hopefully. You don't get too long. So I'm not sure if you're asking um, how it feels to OD, like as in like physically or just your emotions because if it goes down to your emotions, it of course doesn't start the day that you decide that you don't want to live anymore. You have to go back to, you know, sometimes even childhood, which was in my case. I had been dealing with a whole lot of depression since I was a very young girl because there was a whole lot going on at home. There was a lot of fighting. There was a lot of just a lot going on. And because children can't express themselves and we know that, you know, it's it's hard for kids. Like this is even to bring awareness if you're a parent and if you have, you know, a difficult relationship, if your home is always, you know, um, just there's strife and grief in a hostile environment like your kids are going to feel it and they're going to take it to adulthood so by the time i was 15 i was dealing severe depression and i would even be homeless sometimes because there was a lot of bouncing around there was a lot of step parents involved and there was no physical abuse but there was a lot of emotional abuse a lot of neglect a lot of you know just even just a whole lot of other things right that i'll share eventually but i was a very depressed girl and i didn't know who to go to and you know one day i just decided that i didn't want to you know live anymore so i ended up you know chugging down a bottle of you know some pills and um i remember just feeling dizzy weak and somebody around me noticed um i still had the courage like i didn't think it was gonna work y'all because i still went to school that day i don't know what i was thinking but um eventually somebody at school was like hey are you okay and i was like no i was like i don't think i am okay so they ended up calling the ambulance and um i was taken to the hospital and they pumped my stomach and it was a very difficult time because my parents were not fully there they were not really just aware of what was going on and nobody around me was like it was kind of seen like oh she just wants attention you know and for the longest time um i feel guilty about that because i didn't just od once i od'd twice and the second time that i did od somebody clearly said this y'all when i was laid out just passing out um, she was like, you just want attention, right? And I just, those things, I just never forgot that. And for the longest time, I did feel like, oh my God, you know, um, this is shameful or whatever. Because it didn't just happen once. But now as an adult, I'm like, I just didn't know how to deal with my emotions, you know? I didn't really have like a like an adult that really just cared to listen. And, you know, my parents were just, they just went on with their lives and I've come around to understanding them and forgiving them and they were also teen parents so they were very young but um this part of me you know this is why I speak so much now on like mental health and you know being okay with you know speaking your mind and this is why I try to turn it around for my kids because you know it's it's a thing you know so anyways um you uh you're giving two options right when you OD at the hospital the first time um, I was told that I could either go to rehab because, you know, they drug test you and everything. And I was, y'all already like doing drugs. I was, I started doing drugs when I was very young. I was like 11 years old because of this whole situation. And, um, I, you know, would like smoke weed, you know, would pop bars, do volumes, all that. Y'all, y'all know Houston's like crazy out there, lean, everything, um, and so by the time I was 15, of course, you know, I was smoking because I, I didn't know how else to deal. So they were like, you can either go to rehab for two months or, you know, you can go to a psych hospital for like a week or a few days. And then, you know, get treatment for depression because you need to be on, on meds. And um, so I was like, shoot, I'm not going to no months to no rehab. Shoot, I went to the psych hospital. I did. And that was a whole experience in itself. Um, I can't tell you that I remember too much because during the time there, I remember just sleeping a lot and like playing cards every now and then. And I mean, I was I just didn't care to be there. I was just like, I'm gonna get out of here and I'm just, I don't even know what I'm gonna do, but you know, I, I have to do something, you know? And then after I left there, I tried, but again, because it was so bad, the environments that I was in, it, it wasn't helping and I ended up just overdosing again like not even a year later. And the second time I did have to go to rehab, they sent me to rehab. Um, and 
I was there for like two months, I think, yeah. But I met some very just um, special people there that really just, they were key to me later on changing my life because um that's i think rehab was really when i got help like because i'm not gonna say that i mean i don't need meds or whatever because if doctors decided whatever that i produce a low count of serotonin or some type of thing that they told me right that i need to permanently be on but for me i think it was more like i was just going through a lot and i didn't know how to deal these things so in rehab you do get like you know, there's a lot of more therapy, like talking and all that. So it was a lot more helpful. Um, and I met some really good people. And afterwards, after getting out of there, and one of the ladies that was there, Miss April, I'll never forget you. Oh, my God. Every time I think of her. There's so many people, special people that have been key throughout my life that even though I didn't have one person, it was like God always sent me somebody. Even when I was ODing in the hospital, I skipped this part. One of the guy nurses, um, when he was pumping my stomach, he's like, you're going to live and you're going to live a full life. And you know what? You know, you can come back and say hi anytime you want to because I know you're going to live. And he spoke life over my life, y'all. And now that I'm a nurse, I'm like, man, for all that's so special. Like, I've had two, like, very special encounters with nurses throughout, like, just different times of my life. And they've really just... Um, it just blessed my life in different ways so i got out i ended up finishing um high school i had a because of all this i had to drop out and i had to um, get my gd later in a place where i could stay i ended up going to job corps in san marcos Texas, san marcos texas and i was just thinking like a grown-up i was like now nah, i gotta you know I, I don't have time to finish high school i have to hurry up and get my you know diploma and i have to hurry up and like work and i was just thinking of just standing on my two feet you know when all this was going on so yeah it was after the ODing that um i decided to get my life right but um for the longest time i did feel shame y'all i felt so much shame and now i'm like there's no shame in this um we all go through things and i just wanted to share my story hoping that it'll bring some type of just hope and comfort knowing that you're not the only one that goes through these things you know and i will continue to speak on this because there's still so many people that go through this and we need help from time to time and it's okay to ask for help it's okay to speak on things you know and even afterwards um i had to it took it even took like so many years after this to even heal so much that happened during that time i still have a hard time with things that happened around that time you know um, but it's like a one day at a time thing and we're going to be okay. You guys, I just, I hope this is a blessing to somebody.